Well, I promised you we were going to get to your email, so let's get started with let's that. Go for it. Yeah. This is Madison Pat, who says, Sometimes I forget to pray before I eat my food. After I'm almost finished, I'll remember to pray. Is it a sin if I forget to say my prayers before I eat? Madison, it isn't a sin if you pray or don't pray. You know, when we used to work in Columbia, we would pray and don't let the food hurt us. <laughs> Because there's so many things, so many it's diseases. A good in many places. Know? So uh, that wasn't sinful. That was just self-preservation. But I think the Lord knows your heart, and you eat the food with gratitude, and you know there's a prayer in your heart. So, it, it, yeah. okay. This is C. N. who writes. Suppose I find my soulmate. Am I obligated to marry that person and have children? Truth be told, I think of marriage as more of a prison than a union, and I don't really want children. Would God be accepting of a common law marriage where my husband and I have sex, but we do not have kids? Or would this prevent us from being taken into heaven when the rapture comes? You are a crazy mixed up kid, <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. No, that, that um, let's start the whole thing. There's nothing in the Bible that talks about a soulmate. I don't know where all this stuff comes from, but there's no such thing as a soulmate. So you, are you obligated to marry your so-called soulmate? Well, there is no such thing mm -hmm. in biblical terms that I'm aware of. Do you know I, anything yeah, in the Bible? I, no, not okay. at all. All right, so that's yeah, number one. That's number one. <laughs> so no, you're not obligated. Now, you say, I, I don't want to have kids, but I like to have sex. Well, that's fine. But um, you will have kids. If you have sex, <laughs> but you don't have to necessarily. Right. <laughs> um, the the Catholics practice what they call rhythm. There are also ways of, of you know using birth control that you don't. Have, your sexual activity does not necessarily lead to procreation. Um, but uh, common law, why not get married? I mean, yeah, you, know, you get a lot of benefits from being married, and you want to solemnitize this union. You just don't want to say, well, I'm I'm. A, I'm Getting a common law union. The whole thing is, is, is your thinking is, is just confused on this area. Yeah, it's very I, 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 mm -hmm. I don't want this, I want that, I don't want, you're not a very good candidate for marriage, if you ask me. Well, you know, for this cause, a man will leave yeah. his mother and father, cleave his wife, twain with one flesh, and they live together, and out of that comes a union of, of, of godly children. But uh, if, if you don't have children, I don't think it's a sin to use birth control. But at the same time, I I do think that you should get married. I mean, why, why go common law? You don't have to. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go down to the justice of priest and get a license. You don't have to have a big church wedding if you don't want to. Right. But I, I think you should solemnify the relationship. All right. Okay, this is Cassie who says, how can you tell the difference between God's voice and your own thoughts? Does he answer you with words, feelings, or pictures? Uh, that is an extraordinarily good question because uh, that's a question we all wonder about. We see through a glass darkly, then face to face. And, um, you know, the Apostle Paul said, and I think I have the mind of the Lord. I mean, even the Apostle Paul writing the Bible said, I think I have the mind of the Lord, talking about the relationship of men and women. All right. Um, how do you know? Through reason of use, you have your senses exercised to determine good from evil. You walk with God. You get used to hearing the voice of God. And you try to live out those things, and then it's trial and error. Sometimes you miss it, sometimes you don't. God isn't mad at you at a little child because the little child's trying to walk and he falls down every so often. Yeah. So it's, it's a walk, and you begin to walk with the Lord, and little by little you hear the voice of the Lord saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. All right. Okay. Here's one for you. Oh, good. <clears throat> this is a viewer who says, I met my husband in church at a time when I was a virgin. He was divorced with two kids, having left his wife after she cheated on him. Within weeks, I was living with him and got pregnant by him. We have since married and have been together three years, but now I feel like I betrayed God because I didn't marry a virgin, had premarital sex, and had a child out of wedlock. My husband and I get along great and never argue, but I feel like I should start over. Should I stay married or leave him and become celibate? Wow. Uh, Dissect that you know, one. It's amazing. <laughs> this guy's a Christian, and yet woman, he, he is uh, uh, he, this man, and he's, mm -hmm. he's, he's married, and he's seducing a girl two weeks after he meets her. I mean, they're having sex. He said, within two weeks, wasn't it? Two <laughs> weeks. She said, within weeks. Mm -hmm. Well, weeks. I said, two, <laughs> within weeks. I mean, he must have really put the move on you pretty heavy, and you must have been pretty willing on the whole thing. All right, but 
subsequent, the fact that you weren't a virgin or he wasn't a virgin, that's got nothing to do with marriage. Uh, that, that there's nothing in the Bible that, that disqualifies somebody. Well, you got married, you weren't a virgin. I don't know anything mm -hmm. the Bible that talks about that. Mm -hmm. That was fine for Mary. She was a virgin, but her, her, she, what was in her was conceived by the Holy Spirit of God. All right. So uh, you've been married. You have a child. You have a, what a parent is a Christian husband. The, the reason for his divorce was infidelity of the spouse. Right. So uh, that's okay. And I see no reason why you shouldn't live a happy married life. You're doing okay together. So rejoice in what you have. And don't be coming up with all these, um, these spurious problems. I mean, you, you know, you, so far so good. You made some mistakes. You, you, know, you did something wrong, but you have rectified that. And now you're living according to God's law in holy matrimony. So enjoy it. Praise the Lord. Yeah, forgive yourself. Forgive I mean, yourself. God, you. forgive God will forgive you. Yeah. And, but it's over. You, I mean, get on with it. And no, you don't want to divorce and break up and start all over again. That makes no sense at all. All right. Okay, this is Jamie who says, I was treated rudely by a restaurant employee the other day. I know that as a Christian, I have to, quote, turn the other cheek. I don't want to get anyone fired, but I also don't think it's right for employees to treat customers poorly. I would appreciate some good advice. All right, as somebody who happens to have uh, a hotel here at uh, Regent University where we have a very fine restaurant and employees, uh, the question is, uh, we train the, the, the employees to be courteous to people. And I think the owner of that restaurant would appreciate the fact that you said, look, I, I like your food, you've got a nice restaurant, but this particular employee was very surly and uh, off-putting, and I think that it he or she did it to me, they'll do it to others. So I just want to tell you so you can correct the situation. But uh, I think that's a helpful suggestion that most uh, owners of a business would appreciate a great mm -hmm. deal. Yeah. So if they fire that <coughs> stuff up. Maybe log, encourage him to, to train his people well, because of course. at the Founders Inn you would never get a surly <laughs> they waiter better be surly. <laughs> No, but we, we had uh, uh, one of the finest organizations in the country training our employees when we first mm -hmm. opened up. I mean, yeah, they're amazing. And, and, but they make a big thing of it. Good morning, Mr. Smith. I mean, that, the, the good businesses all want to cultivate the favor of their customers. Mm -hmm. And they want to treat them right, make them feel special, because they want them to come back. Right. And they exactly. appreciate their business. Exactly. So if you've got a surly employee, what that employee is doing is undermining the premise of your business, which Absolutely. is to provide service. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> That's all the time we have for so email questions. tell the owner. <laughs> go to the owner and say, listen, I mean, I don't want to get anybody in trouble, but here's a problem. And, I, you know. It'll be appreciated. It will, it will <laughs> I hope. If it isn't, then the guy shouldn't, should not be in business. All right.